No one can resist the temptation of power. If they can, it must be because their power is not strong enough, or they haven't reached a point where power is within their grasp. I am loyal to King Joffrey, my one true love. Sansa Stark is the eldest daughter of Jon Snow's foster father, Eddard Stark. Since childhood, she has had a great desire for power. She disregards the objections of her family in order to become a queen. After the death of King Robert, she tries to please his son and her mother, Cersei, who is vying for the throne. However, Cersei, in order to eliminate any potential threat, plots against Eddard Stark and deceives Sansa into convincing her father to publicly confess his crimes, promising that he would be spared. My lady Sansa has begged mercy for her father. But they have the soft hearts of women. So long as I am your king, treason shall never go unpunished. Sir Illyn, bring me his head. Since her father's execution, Sansa's dream of a royal life turned into a nightmare. The prince not only torments her emotionally but also physically abuses her without any restraints. Because of her stark lineage, Cersei keeps Sansa around to preserve the purity of noble blood. However, the prince becomes infatuated with Marjorie Tyrell and declares her as the rightful queen. This causes Sansa to completely abandon all her hopes. However, following the principle of keeping resources close, Tywin Lannister, who holds the real power as the hand of the king, arranges for Sansa to be married to the king's uncle, Tyrion Lannister. This intensifies Joffrey's mistreatment towards Tyrion, who is already seen as insignificant. It's not meant as an honor. Unaware of his own actions, Joffrey has already earned the resentment of Marjorie's mother in order to prevent her daughter from marrying the Mad King. She poisons a cup of wine. <laughs> Idiots, help your king! Move away! Joffrey! Oh. Come with me now. Joffrey! If you want to leave, you have to leave. Which makes Tyrion the scapegoat. Meanwhile, the cunning master of coin, Littlefinger, takes advantage of the chaos and sends Sansa, of noble blood, to Harrenhal, which is under his control. Although the castle is ruled by Sansa's aunt, she falls victim to her age and is pushed out of the moon door by Littlefinger. Sansa fabricates a perfect lie about her aunt's death, allowing Littlefinger to easily control Harrenhal. However, in order to expand his own power, Littlefinger arranges for Sansa to marry Roos Bolton's bastard son, known as Ramsay Bolton, who is notorious for his cruelty and skinning people alive. Despite Ramsay's handsome and seemingly charming appearance, on their wedding night, he forces Sansa to consummate the marriage while making Theon Grey joy, who was once Sansa's foster brother and now his captive. Watch the entire ordeal. You stay here, Rick. Breaking free from their father's control is the dream of every person. After her foster father Eddard Stark was executed, Theon became reckless and disregarded any sense of loyalty or gratitude. He massacred the people who had raised him in the Stark family. Upon learning that his former comrades had staged a rebellion against him while seeking revenge for their father, Theon, Rob Stark's elder brother, sends Roose Bolton's son to take care of Theon and his men in the Dreadfort. However, Ramsay easily avoids any harm, having bribed some guards who already held a low opinion of Theon. A bite! What is dead may never die! What is dead? Helpless and alone, Theon is taken back to Arenal by Ramsay. Not knowing where he is or being able to answer any questions, Theon lives in constant fear and silence. Want the truth. What truth? Why'd you take Winterfell? To take the North while it was vulnerable. What were you going to do once you took it? Hold it. Rule it. Good. Yeah, that's very good. Regardless of which side he chooses to answer questions, the outcome remains the same. When everyone else leaves, Ramsay, disguised as a servant, claims to be sent by Theon's sister. After removing his restraints, Ramsay leads Theon away, telling him to run in the direction of the sunrise, where his sister awaits him. However, as Theon keeps running until noon, he becomes completely disoriented, pursued by hunters, with no advantage in the open field. Theon is forced to run deeper into the forest. Yet, 
he is eventually cornered by those who catch up with him, just as they are about to unleash their violence. Arrows fly from the shadows, eliminating the attackers one by one. No! <laughs> <laughs> Come, my lord. Witnessing the return of his savior, Theon develops a favorable impression of Ramsay and begins to reveal his inner desires and plans, as well as his grievances against the Stark family and his hatred for all of its members. However, having lived with them for so long, Theon still feels guilt for his betrayal. My real father lost his head at King's Landing. I made a choice. Not everything, my lord. Perhaps it is because of this confession that Ramsay decides to spare Theon's life. Although he is certainly not exempt from punishment, as the flames ignite, fear fills every pore of Theon's body. No, I didn't! You can't! Please! Put him back where he belongs. While his death sentence is avoided, he cannot escape the punishment of a living death. With the highest realm of this punishment being the implantation of fear, Ramsay, disguised as a servant, releases Theon and then impersonates the savior to lure him back into the dungeon. First, Theon's mental torment intensifies day and night, and he is not allowed to eat or drink. Ramsay tells him that he must figure out why he was captured and the name of the place they are in. But every time Theon answers a question incorrectly, Ramsay verbally and sadistically torments him, laughing at his failures. Now. Where? Blasters! <laughs> Do I look like a f number to you? Can't hold! How did you know that? It was just a guess. I betrayed Rob. That's why you're torturing me. Yes. You win. There is another instance where Ramsay pretends to have been exposed and forcibly shaves the bones of Theon's little finger. At this point, Theon is on the verge of a breakdown. Happening to you for a reason. Well, one reason. Ah! Enjoy it. Please, go it off! Go it off! Go it off! Ah! The next day, Theon is awakened by two women who loosen his restraints. They serve him tea, water, and apply ointment to heal his wounds. A fearful and confused Theon asks about Ramsay's whereabouts. By now, his will to survive has taken up 80% of his inner thoughts. However, he ultimately succumbs to their repeated advances and entanglements. Just as Theon's vision becomes blurry, Ramsay enters blowing a horn, interrupting the situation. When he pulls out a specially crafted knife, Theon's fear reaches its breaking point. Mercy! Mercy! This is... I'm not killing you. Just making a few... alterations. Having lost everything, Theon no longer displays any expression, not even in the face of Ramsay's mocking. Look like a Theon Greyjoy anymore. You're just meat. What's your name? Theon Greyjoy. What's your name? Beep. If you make it out of the woods, you win. Run, Tazzy! Run! <laughs> It turns out that the two women had seduced Theon, arousing jealousy in Ramsay's girlfriend and leading her to become Ramsay's plaything afterward. Theon completely submits out of fear. <laughs> you can see that your presence has become a bit of a problem. <laughs> As Theon is the sole heir of the Greyjoy family, his father, upon learning of Ramsay's actions, berates him, reminding him of his lowly birth and urging him not to tarnish the family's reputation with such cruelty. Furthermore, his father fears that Ramsay's treatment of Theon may lead to their own family being targeted. But Rake... Rake will never betray us. I place far too much trust in you. To prove that his methods will make their enemies submit, Ramsay orders Theon to groom him. With a knife in Theon's possession, Ramsay then explains that all the houses are vying for the position of the king in the north, and because they had lived together, Ramsay let the youngest two Stark brothers go out of sentimentality. But there is no need to worry, as Theon's father has personally killed Robb Stark, the eldest son of his foster father. When Theon learns that his foster father's eldest son, Robb Stark, has been killed after being controlled by Cersei and has begun forming alliances and preparing for a rebellion. 
He realizes that his foster family is in upheaval. Rob, with his military strategic skills and kingly demeanor, quickly solidified his position as the heir to the north. However, on the path to forming a powerful alliance, they needed to cross the Trident River, and guarding the crossing at the Trident River was the Lord of Riverrun, who had some grievances with Theon's family in the past, due to the constraints of time and geography, and as the commander, Rob couldn't personally intervene, therefore, his mother had to negotiate alone. I'll go. Come on. I have known Lord Walder since I was a girl. He would never harm me. Unless there was a prophet in it. At the age of 90, the Lord of Riverrun had eight wives, 23 sons, and seven daughters. The exact number of his descendants was unknown, but he practically single-handedly managed the castle. The Lord of Riverrun agreed to allow them to cross the river but demanded that Rob marry his daughter and grant knighthood to one of his sons. This way, he would have a foot in the nobility. Helpless, Rob had to accept all the demands. After successfully crossing the Trident River, they launched a surprise attack on multiple Lannister camps and raided the family's main camp, capturing Cersei's brother. A few days later, they received news of Theon's foster father's death, and all the houses began to support this young leader. Rob became the rightful king in the north and sent a message through scouts, demanding that the King of the Seven Kingdoms relinquish control over the north and release his two sisters and their father's remains. And I'll give them peace. I will litter the south that Lannister did. However, in the subsequent war, Rob quickly fell in love with a battlefield medic. However, a prestigious lord is usually expected to enter into a marriage alliance to expand their advantage, rather than follow their own feelings. Despite being engaged to the Lord of Riverrun's daughter, Rob insisted, and his mother allowed him to break the agreement. The next night, they held their wedding, causing some loyalists to waver. To fulfill the promised commitments, Rob's mother had her unmarried brother replace him in the marriage alliance between the two families, combined with secret plots and manipulation from the hostile House Lannister, the Lord of Riverrun, who felt deceived, and some loyalists who didn't support Rob, all came together, on the night of his uncle's wedding ceremony, when King Rob gave permission to consummate the marriage, everyone turned the wedding into a bloodbath. My king has married and I owe my new queen a wedding gift. Let him go and I swear that we will forget this. I swear it by the all gods and you. We will take no vengeance. You already swore me one oath right here in my castle. You swore by all the gods your son would marry my daughter. Take me for a hostage. That's... The brother they had grown up with was murdered, and Rob himself had strayed from the right path due to his lust for power. He was now imprisoned in a dog kennel after Ramsay implanted fear in him. When Theon saw his sister risking her life to save him, he still believed it was a trick by Ramsay. It's me, Yara. You can't trick me. Tell him. Tell him you couldn't trick me. I'm not tricking you, Theon. I'm saving not you. Not Theon. Reek. Here. Reek. My name is Reek. Before Theon could overcome his fear, Ramsay arrived with his men. The confined space resulted in heavy losses for both sides. After excessively fearing, Theon bit his sister's hand and then retreated back into the cage. Seeing the deadlock, Ramsay released the fierce dogs from the cage, forcing Sansa to reluctantly give up on rescuing Theon. Make for the ship, now! For your brother! My brother's dead. Later, Theon witnessed Ramsay torturing Sansa, who had been married off from a distant land. Every day thereafter, Sansa would try to persuade Theon. Finally, one day, the past they had shared stirred something deep within Theon's soul, and he could no longer bear it. During one of Ramsay's absences, Theon watched as Ramsay's lover threatened Sansa's life. Overwhelmed by guilt, Theon finally reached his breaking point. Please. Oh, should we begin now? After the noble Sansa escaped the forced marriage, their father began to blame Theon, a bastard, and expressed disappointment that without Sansa, he couldn't have noble-born children, which meant he couldn't secure his position or have an heir. He also desired a son from his wife. To evade Ramsay's pursuit, 
Theon decided to lure the pursuers away on his own after crossing the river. However, the hounds still managed to pick up Sansa's scent. In their moment of despair, Sansa's mother's former guard appeared just in time to save them. After much remorse, Theon decided to return to his sister's side. Sansa, Theon, and the guard went to the Black Castle to find Jon Snow. Father Bolton was worried that Jon Snow would seek revenge. Ramsay proposed to go and eliminate the threat at the Black Castle, thus dealing with Jon Snow. However, their father knew that killing the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch would result in all the houses turning against them, so he vetoed Ramsay's plan. At that moment, the steward entered and reported that his wife had given birth to a baby boy. This meant that the Bolton family finally had a legitimate heir. Being a bastard, Ramsay no longer relied on his father's inheritance. You'll always be my firstborn. I'll leave Winterfell. I'll go back to the Riverlands. He's your brother. I prefer being an only child. 